No wonder the priests were shoeless. What holy ground we tread when we approach the Ark of the Covenant. Its lid, the mercy seat, is made of solid gold, as if to shield from us the radioactive contents in this glorious container. For the first object in it is the law, represented by two stone tables. When we look at this ornate box, we know we're seeing a symbol of the Lord Jesus himself, the only man who could ever fulfill God's inflexible commands. What else was hidden in the ark? Here is a New Testament description. Quote, the Ark of the Covenant, in which were the golden pot that had the manna, Aaron's rod that budded, and the tables of the covenant. Verse 4. So first, the pot of manna. Moses had instructed Aaron, quote, take a pot and put an omer of manna in it and lay it up before the Lord to be kept for your generations. Exodus 16, 33. And in this lies miracle number one. You recall that if anyone tried to store manna for even one extra day, quote, it bred worms and stank, verse 20. But this manna now represented God's own bread. As Jesus himself explained, quote, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. John 6, 51. Unfortunately, just as the Jews in Moses' day gave the heavenly bread its name, manna, meaning, what is it? So the Jews in Jesus' day responded, who is this? Matthew 21, 10. Yet even though this manna seemed incorruptible, the fact that it was one omer, a person's daily allotment, reminds us that our enjoyment of Christ should be fresh each day. In fact, he promises his people in our day, quote, to him who overcomes, I will give some of the hidden manna to eat. Revelation 2.17. Also in the ark was Aaron's staff. This is miracle number two. There had been rumblings of a rebellion in the camp and the Lord nipped it in the bud. When those who craved leadership saw that only one rod had supernaturally burst into life, resembling the menorah's tree of life, the message was clear whom God had chosen. But in a richer way, our great high priest, bursting forth in resurrection, proves his right to rule and his power to give us his abundant life. Now, what of two tables? When God gave the law to Moses on Sinai, the people glibly promised to keep them all. But Moses couldn't get down the mountain fast enough before they had broken the first and greatest of them. The law was perfect and good, but because we were shot through with corruption, we were incapable of keeping it. Besides, it was never intended to make men holy, but to show us how sinful we were and stir us to look for a savior. Quote, for if righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died in vain. Galatians 2.21. No, says Paul, quote, the law was our tutor to bring us to Christ that we might be justified by faith. Chapter 3, verse 24. Moses smashed the tablets on the ground. That's what his people had done to it. But when he returned to his meeting with God, he received another set. And this was placed in the ark. No use giving it to the people. They would only break them. But God's man would not only keep the law, as he said, he did not come to, quote, destroy the law, but to fulfill, Matthew 5, 17. Any hope for us? Yes, do you see it? There on the mercy seat, it's blood. Not now the blood of bulls or goats as applied on the Day of Atonement, 
quote, for it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats could take away sins, Hebrews 10.4. Dare we say it? It is, quote, the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, that cleanseth us from all sin. And this is miracle number three. <laughs> 